KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227 or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you. And good afternoon and welcome to Lambda Weekly. I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with Ron Landis and the late Patty Fink and the later Valetta Lil. <laughs> <laughs> it really feels terrible, doesn't it, Valetta, when you show up later than Patty? I did that once. I did that once. It, it's just, it gives you this feeling in your gut. You never have, have you, Laron? I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, You've been okay. to events. Yeah, but it just, it leaves you with a feeling in your gut that there is something wrong with me. There's just no excuse, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Stop. You start checking your watch. Did it, is, what, is my better yell? Uh-huh, uh-huh, exactly. So, so welcome. Thank you. We also have um, Joy with us. Joy, welcome back again hey, thank you and you're here to tell us about the fundraiser on wednesday june 24th at 8 p.m to 10 p.m at cedar springs tap house which is in a loom uh we're starting at eight o'clock come by at 7 30 and i'm, I'm going early we're gonna eat you yeah yeah well, it's a steak night she's going late no oh. <laughs> i'm gonna be across the street at the town hall she'll be late in other words <laughs> in other words <laughs> that's petty lingo for i'll be late <laughs> Josh, you're going? Yes. Okay, so you can meet Josh or Chris or whichever personality shows up that day. Um, it, uh, Doc has to be here at the studio uh, that night, so Doc won't be here, but we're going to have a lot of fun. So come on and join us. Talk a little bit more about it because we have extra performers lined up now. Valletta, you were on the city council, and I'm reading all this nonsense that I'm not understanding about the city rented out its logo to a company that insures your exploding sewers. Is, is that exactly what it is? Yes, she said with a straight face. <laughs> yes, that is correct. On a gay show. Um, it, you know, I suppose it's a surprise to everyone we, when they get those letters and it has the city's logo on it and we all feel like, oh my, do I have a code violation here? Uh, you know, did I, did I not take care of my cat or dog getting their licenses and so forth? And it's really a pitch. Or, I was kind of worried about a red light ticket. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, a red light ticket. Um, but she got on a Sunday, probably, on her Driving way. over here, yeah. and she was late. <laughs> so it, I think really what I see as the issue here is the council and the city manager made a choice. Mm -hmm. And they made a choice to essentially derive income for revenue for the city in order to pay for other things that they didn't quite get into the budget. And so it's kind of a little recurring game that we're seeing now. We, we saw additional money for um, leases for drilling on public lands, on, on park lands and on city lands. We saw those kiosks that you see in the public right away with maps and ads and so forth. And those are all revenue streams for the city. And what kind of happens is city manager presents a budget, and the council says at some point earlier than that, we don't really like these selling our logos, we really don't want to lease out our lands or whatever. And they get to the point where they're doing the budget and the city manager goes, well, there's one way you could get a little bit more money. and." You know, all these things are in the budget, but your constituents are telling you they want longer rec hours, more library books, more arts, whatever it is, AIDS funding, whatever it is. And the council sort of makes their deal then with the city manager to get that additional revenue stream thinking, well, I'm doing a good thing here by getting more 
name whatever thing you think the city should be paying for additional money for. And, but yet they've sort of made that a little bit of a deal with the devil here. Um, and what that says is we really need to, A, look at our budgets more closely earlier and not make those deals so easily because it gets into crunch time and you're two weeks before you're adopting the budget and go, yeah, that sounds great. I can get all these trinkets for my constituents and there won't be any repercussions for it. There always are repercussions, you know. The oil company comes in and wants to drill on the land. You find yourself walking around a very large kiosk in downtown Dallas, or you get this information from the city that you, scares you and you think you need to buy this insurance. So it really is, nobody should, I, I'm a little put off by, you know, whether it's the council or the city manager, like, oh, there's gambling going on here. Well, everybody kind of knew the deal they made. And so you just need to think more clearly. Next time comes budget time. Think ahead what you want to cut, what you want to add, and don't make easy deals to get easy money because it won't e be easy in the end. Okay, so the question I have about this one, what were you just saying before the show, Patty, about your sewer? Oh, we had Orangeburg Pipe, which is, you know, a common occurrence in, in East Dallas. It's old, it's from, it's very popular in the 40s. It's basically rolled up tar paper for pipe. And it just gives way, it collapses, it, you know, and everybody in my neighborhood, and we live in Old Lake Highlands, which is, in, you know, from the early 50s, um, everybody in our neighborhood had to replace it at some point, and we, we're just astounded we got to last, what, 60 years or, or whatever. Yeah. And who's responsible for it, you or the city? Oh, from our house to the, uh, the main tie-in at the city, we're responsible for. Wow. And so that letter comes the day after we paid <laughs> this enormous sum for our replacement pipe. And so, you know, Aaron and I were kind of laughing, like, well, that's kind of crappy, <laughs> so to speak. So to speak. No right. pun intended. And you open it up, and it's got the city logo at the top. And the, and the first thing I scanned down is to see if it's the red light ticket, you know. And there's a little tear-off at the bottom, and, it, and fairly prominently it says, do not send money now. And I'm thinking, that's the first exposure I have to this without even reading it. I just catch the, the big font, you know. And it was alarming to me, and I had to read it carefully and go, oh, well, you know, insult to injury for us. But then we got like three of them. You know, by the right. third letter, I was like, oh, please. And by then, it had exploded. The whole issue had exploded, <laughs> just the pipe. You know, and talking about, like, they basically sold their soul to a, a for-profit company. And it, it's, it's something they've picked up from other cities. We aren't the first city to do this. I think Plano does it and some of your other mm -hmm. surrounding suburbs. And somebody went to the National League of Cities conference and they realized this was additional revenue. And, you know, some of this comes from the feds cut money and the state cuts money and so forth. And so cities look for ways of selling their logo, selling their identity, selling their brand, if mm -hmm. you will, in order to derive revenue. And that's how you kind of get yourself into these situations. And they don't want to raise the taxes, so they go, well, we'll sell this. And it's kind of a, you know, it's a false choice. In some, in mm -hmm. it, feels, it feels like we need to take a shower, you know? <laughs> like, I don't know, it feels kind of... Dirty. Dirty, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, like, and when I saw it, what I thought was, okay, if my sewer needs insurance, Something happens to my sewer. I don't need an insurance policy. I'm going to call 311. I'm going to call the city that I'm having a problem. Now, I understand if it's on your property, you have to replace it yourself. But most of the time, you don't even know it's on your property till somebody comes out and looks. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you have to call the city first anyway. You try, you're try. you yeah. sort of go, working through a decision tree when this happens, mm -hmm. you're trying to do it as quickly as, fo as possible. And yes, you think something is wrong with the sewer line in your alley, mm -hmm. for example. And then you realize it's on your property. And those of us who live in old neighborhoods, I mean, I live in a 1936 house. Uh, so, you know, we've had to replace that line mm -hmm. before and our tree roots grow into it. And we have to have a guy out every two, three years to kind of put something in there and take care of that, take care of that issue. But that probably also brings up the fact that all your infrastructure 
is old and if you you know we complain about our streets but we don't complain about our water and sewer largely because we can't see it but the first briefing i went to on the council was the announcement that 50 percent of your infrastructure under your streets that's your water and your sewer is over 50 years old which is its <laughs> useful life mm -hmm. and so you're going to have all of these things and dallas is not unique i mean go to north of america you know sort of northeastern cities of boston mm -hmm. and new york and even it's Chicago, 100 years old which is 100 years old or even older and there were pipes in east dallas which were literally boat arc trees that were hollowed mm -hmm. out and used as piping over the years and eventually they got replaced and your particular kind of piping was just unique to the 40s and 50s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank God yeah. you and I live in Garland, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Where I right think they there. sell that ID. <laughs> <laughs> I think they actually sell their city logo. You might want to check. You're going to have to check that. I, I think it's right good. I live right at the edge of Garland. I live right at the edge of Garland, Richardson, Dallas. <laughs> so I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, well, I it, think it's interesting, though, David, that you would call the city first. See, we call the plumber. <laughs> <laughs> and the plumber told us whether it was us or them, you know. So, but you would you would go for the city first. Mm. Uh, you know, and actually, when I did have a sewer problem once in an old old house uh, that was built in 1927 in Oak Cliff, we called Roto Rooter first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, well, the old house we had in Garland, we did have some plumbing issues, and the first thing we called was the city, and they repaired it. Because it was on their side of the I, line. I, I, apparently yeah. so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Um, so we really did talk about exploding sewers here in Dallas on <laughs> this show. It's, people thought I was just making that up. And the excitement is palpable here in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and one thing I do want to mention, you were talking about infrastructure that's over 50 years old. Some of it here in, on this show is too. Um, <laughs> So it, it, almost all of it beyond its <laughs> beyond its useful life, huh? Not us. <laughs> I tell you what, fifty is pretty darn young in my book. Yeah, fifty is young. Mm -hmm. And you had to replace your sewer; it was only fifty years well, you old. Know, you know, years ago, Aaron bought this this old T Bird from 1963, and we, it was a really cool car. It's, it's still a very, really cool car. And we're driving down the road, and she says, "This means I can get antique plates." And I'm like, antique? <laughs> I was born a year before this car. <laughs> she goes, classic, classic car, <laughs> classic plates. <laughs> Cars are considered old at 25. Right. So. <laughs> but it was a good save on her part. Buildings at 50 car. and <laughs> humans at 100, I think, is the rule. <laughs> Valetta, you have been traveling nonstop because we've been trying to arrange for you to come on the show for like four months now. Uh, and, oh, I can't, I'm in Argentina. Oh, I can't, I'm in... Um, Colombia. Uh, Colombia, whatever. <laughs> Get it right, David. I'm sorry. <laughs> can't keep track. Um, last time I saw you, when we finally did arrange, you said you're trying to get to every state. Uh-huh. And you had, like, North Dakota left? I have, I, I have North Dakota, Idaho, um, Hawaii, and Alaska, which most everybody has been to. Um, wow. I know. I'm it's hard to shocked. believe. Uh, so tomorrow, uh, I was considering going to North Dakota, but I've backed away, and uh, we're flying to Wyoming and driving to Idaho, so I get that. So then I'll only have three states. Wow. Hmm. They don't have airports in Idaho? Not that are flown by the airline that I go That you by. can go by. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Without doing a plug for my husband's airline, I'll just say. Um, and what will you be doing in Idaho? I'm not sure. You know, when you look at TripAdvisor and there's a long list of things that you can do, Idaho Falls has a really short list, mm. I should say. So we'll be looking at the beautiful scenery, probably a few museums, and then going back to Wyoming to Jackson Hole. Hmm. That's not surprising to you, is it, David? <laughs> no, actually, I've been to Idaho. Oh, okay. And what did and, you and what do, did you, do? you know, actually, part of the state is very pretty. It's yeah, mountainous. Yeah, I think it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, it, That's it's not the issue. Yeah, and you're not really going for the attractions. You, you just go for it. It's a beautiful drive. 
Yeah. We, I've been to Idaho, Idaho, but we didn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't stop? You we just drove, drove through. through. <laughs> and up, up in the skinny part on top? No, going through to, to Oregon. So. See, I try, to make, I, I, I try to do this as kind of my rule is I have to stay the night. The cow so I will be spending the night. So it doesn't night. count unless you I'm trying spend to spend it. the night in all of these. So. And, and what will you be? Or what have you found that you want to do in North Dakota? There's there's a shorter list on <laughs> TripAdvisor for Fargo. <laughs> but you can take your picture with the wood chipper oh. from Fargo oh, and yeah. the Convention and Visitors oh, yeah, Bureau. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's I was, a definite. Uh, that was definitely on my list was to take a picture awesome. of that's that. That's an awesome uh, choice. We got a call. Um, Craters of the Moon is in Idaho. Craters of the Moon. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty okay. cool. Mm -hmm. You know, the president had a hard time getting to North Dakota, too. He'd been to all the states except North Dakota, but he made it this year. Ah, so. yes, he did. He did. So that's very, that's a very cool thing. It, you know, it's busy with all that fracking and mm -hmm. stuff up there, so there are lots of sort of things going on underground up there, but a few less. Mm -hmm. Over there. One of the ones to skip, Hawaii, nothing to see. It's, it's <laughs> not pretty. Um, Joy, before the show, you, we were talking a little bit, and your favorite city is? Uh, Juneau, Alaska, during the summertime. It's um, gorgeous. You can't uh, drive there, though. You have to either go by boat or by plane because it's just surrounded by mountains that no one thought, you know, this is just too, much, too hard to um, um, blow up and, and make a highway through. But it's one of the largest... Uh, cities as far as uh, landmass goes in uh, all of America mm -hmm. and it's really amazing um, seeing bald eagles like outside your window nice and um, is it cold even in summer um I, I wouldn't say cold it's kind of cooler by the by the ocean um, and it's cooler if you go on the mountains but it's pretty nice from what I've been through mm, very cool nice suggestion Excellent. just tr just trying to be helpful <laughs> I appreciate, and I know the listeners appreciate the travel log. Just, be, just before we go on our break here, I uh, just want to note a friend of mine from Wyoming asked me what's the biggest export they have in, you know, from Wyoming, and I couldn't guess, and she said, people. <laughs> <laughs> so I imagine it's probably true for Idaho and North Dakota. And but there are a lot of beautiful areas there. Sure. I mean, we, I've gone to Wyoming a number of times in mm -hmm. Jackson Hole and whitewater rafting and you know go up to Yellowstone and that sort of thing and it's it's very beautiful so I realize it's cold in the winter which is one of the reasons I moved from the north so <laughs> I can understand others making that choice. Do you know and North Dakota is actually one of the fastest growing states right now because of their because oil of their industry. natural resources yeah. and their oil industry. Yeah so they're really going to get you on hotel room rates there. <laughs> You, yes, it's expensive. You might want to stay in South Dakota that night. <laughs> You're listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON FM. I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with the late Patty Fink and Lauren Landis. Our guest today is uh, the later Valletta Lil. We'll come back and talk to Joy about our big fundraiser that's coming up this week, uh, not this weekend, that's coming up on Wednesday uh, right after this. I'm Christina from the Owens, and I listen to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON FM. <laughs> See you there. And you're listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON FM. We have Joy with us. Joy uh, is putting together a big fundraiser for us this Wednesday from 8 to 10 p.m. Come a little bit early. We're going to go early, have dinner. It's over at Cedar Springs Tap House, which is in Illum. Um, uh, Josh, you're going to come have dinner. Uh, Patty will be late. That's one of the features of this, Patty coming late. Uh, you going to make it, Laurent? Yeah, I'll be there. Okay, Laurent will be there. Um, Laurent's on time, so we'll, we'll have dinner. Stop by anybody who's coming for the fundraiser. Um, Joy, you have seven performers lined up. Uh, there's going to be belly dancing, drag, queerlesque. What's queerlesque? Um, it's like burlesque, but more fun. <laughs> uh -huh. In what way? <laughs> uh, more queer. More queer. Yeah. Which is always more fun. Exactly. <laughs> um, and um, 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 drag, 
who, who are our performers? Um, some of the big names are Jaconis Von Trapp, um, mm-hmm. famous belly dancer throughout um, America, and Buck Wild is one of the um, one of the more famous uh, local um, drag kings and, and queer lesque performers. Um, he was the reigning uh, mustache envy um, um, t- title ho- holder, and um, recently, as the year went up, he um, gave it to the the next winner, and it's going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. It, so bring your dollar bills, singles, dollar bills. No cover. No cover. No there's cover. no cover for this. Just um, tip the performers. All that money comes to KNON. We're also going to do a little raffle. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. If you're free Wednesday night, come join us. Cedar Springs Tap House is a, a really nice pl- new place uh, over on Cedar Springs if you haven't been there yet. Um, and thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. We've only been looking for somebody to help us with fundraising for 32 years. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to doing some more events. Uh, oh, 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 you thought we were going to let you go after one. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to happen. This it's, is the first annual. Yeah. It, it, there we go. There you go. Oh, first annual. Apparently I'm doing this every year now. Okay. Uh, not go. just every year, but then uh, <laughs> more news about some of the other events other times during the year. <laughs> We're talking to the later Valetta Lil. (laughs) She earned her new title by arriving at the studio later than Patty today. (laughs) She's very proud of it. Um, It happens sometimes, you know, it's okay. It's It's okay. okay. Yeah. I was going to say, by the way, happy Father's Day to all our fathers out there. That's right. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. I I, I was directing that at you. (laughs) I got that. That's why I'm looking at you. Um... It's been raining. I don't know if you've noticed at all. We have a toll road that's going in the same place where the flood water is going. Good idea? (laughs) Great question. (laughs) Thanks. You know, it's it's really interesting where we are. Uh, The city doesn't have this money. The state doesn't have this money. Sell the logo. (laughs) Thanks. <laughs> this doesn't bear a real resemblance to the balanced vision plan. And people wonder, well, why are you doing this? But you have to do all these other things. So there's still a plan that needs to take, a lot of planning that needs to take place in terms of what are we going to do for parks? How do you plan that? The flood control, I want to remind folks, is probably is the biggest issue, and you are reminded of that right now. And that's a big balancing act along there. No toll road is there. You still need to deal with the, with the flood control. So I think people need to better understand what goes into flood control. And part of that has been doing things like improving the levees and so forth and improving the pumps uh, that get w- the water in and so forth that keep the neighborhoods on the backside from flooding. But at the same time, you've got the Trinity Forest, which we all believe to be extremely important. But part of what the forest does down there is block some of your floodwaters. So what the city has done with the Corps of Engineers is to create these chains of wetlands, which is also some of that is controversial as well because you lose trees and so we've sort of argued as long over the flood control aspects as we have the road Um, and we're still not there we're better off in terms of our flooding now Um, but the city at this point will still need to have some sort of small road to get people into the recreation Mm -hmm. and how does that get paid for will be a discussion i think you said you're are you going wednesday night yep wednesday night Mm -hmm. so you know we're going to have more and more contentious discussions and it seems to me that the mayor is getting a little closer to listening to more of the design aspects and what makes a good park what makes for good flood control what all this, how this all fits together. And he seems to be listening more about that from the Larry Beasleys of the world and, and, and those sorts, sorts of folks. So 
I'm kind of eager to hear what they have to say um, in terms of what does the small road look like in our future. Well, and I'm curious, too, because we have, as it turns out, to, tomorrow is the inauguration of the new, new council. council. And so we have a whole new council, and they all have many views. You know, they have new views on things. And so we're going to see how that shakes out when they get to the horseshoe and they talk about this issue. And they get those briefings. Right. Um, because folks come with one idea and then they start learning things and then they may change their sure. idea. No matter what their position is when they walk in the door, they may have a different feel once they've received all the briefings and that sort of thing. You mean something might happen like we're putting in this toll road, we don't have money to build it. Oh, that makes a difference. And, by the way, it's underwater. <laughs> that could be one of the conclusions they come so, to. So they might just come to the conclusion, maybe it's not the best idea. So they say how, like I said, one of the biggest things will be you don't have the money. Mm -hmm. and, and if people can agree on you're building this a smaller some kind of access road, for lack of a better term. How does that get paid for? Mm -hmm. And more do you want your access? I mean, that will be a long discussion as well. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't know whether I'll be around. <laughs> <laughs> We're still going to be finished discussing this. But what gives me hope is greater discussion of design in this town. And I chair the Dallas Center for Architecture and so, and previously sat on the AIA board. And the AIA was very involved when we did the balanced vision plan, but they sort of were out of the picture for a number of years. And now they've come back strong in terms of getting into the game of public design and discussion, which I think is a healthy thing for cities. So by balanced vision, they don't mean there'll be toll lanes going north and toll roads, toll lanes going south. That's not what it That's is. not what they're talking about. Okay. <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. I, I just want to get that clear. And a quick aside, you got an award from the AIA. I did. I just got a um, national, from the national AIA, honorary membership, which is the highest award that they give to someone who cannot, who is not an architect. So it's somebody who's been a strong advocate for design um, and is recognized as a, a at a national level. And there were four folks this year, interestingly enough, two from Dallas. Oh. And the other one was Marguerite Hoffman, oh. um, <coughs> who you may know her husband, the late Robert Hoffman, was big on the Dallas plan, mm -hmm. which you don't see much of anymore. But Marguerite and Robert gave $150 million to the Dallas Museum of Art. And so she's been very involved in sort of design at, at sort of an artistic level. So it, it's a high honor. It's a high honor. Um, what are some of the design things, balance, vision, plan, things coming up, other than the toll road that other isn't than coming the road. up? Other than the road that isn't coming up. Well, <laughs> you're still going to have to design how you get to those different points. What does a park look like? Um, you know, the next thing you'll probably see is lakes, the discussion of the lakes, which contracts have, have been lent, and certainly I think the, tr the Trinity Trust is looking at a donor for some of those, for those lakes. Will those lakes need to be named after somebody named Margaret, like the bridges? <laughs> Don't be surprised. <laughs> Don't be surprised. Um, but well, I don't think that we should probably uh, get down on people who give great deal of I, I'm money not getting down on them. I'm just wondering if they have to be named Margaret. Because <laughs> we were saying we should be, it should be one could should be called Margaret, another Peggy, another Maggie, so we can tell them apart. So we can tell them yeah, apart. That, that's right. all. I think it was pretty exciting to see Margaret McDermott out there at 103 years old. Signing and her bridge. Signing her, a bridge. And this is a woman, I mean, she was sitting at the table in 1978 when we were talking about the Arts District, and she's still sitting at the table advocating for Is a it better her day. or a relative of hers that's building that gorgeous house in West it's Dallas? It's her daughter. It's her daughter. It's her daughter. That overlooks downtown in a very lower middle class neighborhood 
that's now coming up quite a bit. Close to the Belmont. Yeah, it's, in it's West Dallas. right behind yeah. the Belmont towards downtown. Gorgeous. It's this big glass built into the built into the cliff actually right there because that's where Oak Cliff starts rising um, but that's her daughter that is her daughter you have to give somebody credit who can afford to live anywhere she wants to live exactly to pick that neighborhood just because that's a neat neighborhood yes and they've they've Mrs. McDermott has given a great deal of funding to UT Dallas for example and a lot of the design if you live up close to Richardson you're really familiar with this um, and it kind of contributed to many, many things over time. Her name's you on know, everything the in Symphony the Arts Hall. District. Almost everything in the Arts yeah. District has got a Margaret McDermott or a Eugene McDermott Hall of some kind. Eugene was her husband. Uh, and so she's been both visionary and generous mm -hmm. um, and really wants to do good things for Dallas. And who is that upcoming? philanthropist who sees that same vision is really the question. What's that next generation of folks who are like mm, Patty and I's age or whatever <laughs> um, who are also doing these things? And Dallas has been known for its philanthropist, um, and, but I'm trying to figure out who's the next Kelsey Warren, for example, who gave to Clyde Warren Park. And, that sort of thing. Well, it, she's going strong at 103, that we could all do that, but hopefully our next generation will last that long too, because it's, you know, it's got to put some more people in the pipeline. And it's, a, it's a big part of Dallas. And you can certainly, I can certainly see her giving more, she'll be doing more for the park, and they've done some for the park already, I'll just, some, some of that, she does a lot of things anonymously, so you don't always know that it's her. But at the same time, um, you know, we need to think long and hard what that park looks like even beyond those lakes. And the lakes have flood control issues of how fast the water goes over those lakes and you want them under the bridges. But what does an act of, it's probably going to be more passive. And so we need to stay away from references to Central Park because it's not really, because Central Park isn't flooding once every few years. Um, it's really how do we see it as a useful, low-impact park that we can access for various things, and that might be concerts on occasion, but then you might not be able to do the concert next year because of that. And people, I think, with Clyde Warren Park have become accustomed to more of an activist programmed park. Mm -hmm. And that's not exactly what this park will end mm -hmm. up doing. And I hope a lot of people use things like the Trinity Forest now because it's quite beautiful and quite unique to have that kind of asset in an urban setting and to use the Trinity River Audubon Center, which not enough people go to, and I'd like to see more people go to that. It's, it's one beautiful. of my favorite places in the city. It really is. A and it's a landmark place. because that is where Aaron and I got there before you, David. Uh, it seemed, is a landmark. We'll put is. that in the, <laughs> in the historic landmark status. We'll, put the, we'll make note of that. Um, we have a couple of minutes before we go to, uh, I, I want to talk more about your um, AIA award. Okay. Um, how, what are some of the things that you worked on that uh, earned that for you? Um, a number of things in the historic preservation field. Um, so you're not one of the ones who put this rule in that any building in Oak Lawn that's older than 20 years has to be torn down? <laughs> I'm the one that tried to do the opposite. Ah, okay. <laughs> And just by the look on her face, it's like, don't get me started. <laughs> I, I will start talking I'm about trying, the Avon I'm building. building. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> is that one criminal? That's criminal. But we're going to have a Verizon store. It's criminal. Two blocks from the old Verizon store. It, I did a lot of the current landmark ordinance for the city of Dallas is something that I push for. So landmarks that are designated by the city are protected and are protected more stringently than most landmarks in the in the southwest and so forth our landmark ordinance is, is very good do you drink at st anne's ever do you ever go there and drink no. at st anne's no okay well i said 
you know, pa help save the, that building. Patty's the drinker here, though. Patty's the drinker. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, that, that was back in 98. The diocese wanted to tear down that mm -hmm. building. Um, they wanted to sell the land as a result of a settlement for the lawsuit on the Rudy, the Rudy Koss case, something similar to what we're seeing across the nation. Uh, and they wanted to sell that building, or specifically the land, and tear it down. Um, For anyone who doesn't know where that is, it's right at the end of the tollway, where the tollway exactly. hits downtown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you're coming off the tollway and you're... And it's a nice, neat, here's the problem, little building. It's a little, it's a little building. Mm -hmm. But you can see how next to it they've built a big building mm -hmm. and, you know they live in harmony together and you've got this small building they just tore down what was the mason bar in in state thomas uptown area at, um, over on bowl and you know there was plenty of room to build around that save that building incorporated mm -hmm. this is what makes cities great you know mm -hmm. we all want to go to cities like rome and to go to all these places i just went to cartagena and in uh, in Colombia, we want to see this architecture, and yet we tear it down here. Right. I mean, the things that were even in the Avon, which was really a modest apartment building, the craftsmanship that went into a building like that mm -hmm. is now in the landfill, mm -hmm. which is a cost to the city in terms of the landfill, and you've lost the craftsmanship. You've lost the architecture, and you have a damned store, mm -hmm. a cell phone store. So what is the criteria to get a building deemed a historic site? There are, there are, there are 10. Not just the age of it. It's not, although they need to be 50 years old. Technically, they need to like be Patty. 50 years old. <laughs> um, it, it, how did it play? There are 10 sort of criteria, and they need to meet three. And it can be every, you know, it doesn't all have to be uh, George Washington slept here. Uh, it can be important in terms of, you know, to the culture. St. Anne's was important to the culture because it was where Mexican Americans who were fleeing the res revolution came to Dallas and this is where largely they were educated. So it was important to that culture. It was an important site in, in for the Mexican-American community that had come there. It had architectural elements that were important. It can be like the Big Spring, which is down in the Trinity Forest, and not have a building on it. It's unique, that's unique by the fact that it's the only spring that isn't covered up. Mm -hmm. I mean, Cedar Springs mm -hmm. and Browder Springs and all of these springs that used to flow freely in Dallas have been covered up and so we're going to be making the big spring a landmark so it doesn't always have to be a building it can be a space where maybe a battle took place or an a stone wall even mm -hmm. if stone wall were gone that would still be a site that mm -hmm. would be sure. important right. and there are probably landmarks that we should be looking at in oak lawn that are important to the LGBT community as we, part of our history. We better get them torn down before Valetta gets hold of them. We need to take a break. You're listening to <laughs> Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON FM. I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with the late Patty Fink and Laurent Landis. We'll be back more with Valetta. We'll be back with we'll more later. With, with the later Valetta Lil uh, right after this. This is Jake Winters from Leicester, England, and I listen to Lambda Weekly on KNON 89.3 FM. And you're listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON FM. I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with all of them on the other side of the table. Joy, our uh, uh, wonderful, wonderful fundraiser. Tell us again what's going on Wednesday at 8 p.m. at Cedar Springs Tap House in the Loom. There will be a drag show, um, burlesque, uh, belly dancing. Um, it'll be really fun and energetic and um, pretty new to um, the Cedar Springs Tap House in particular. And it'll be the first time ever that I'll be hosting not only a fundraiser like this, but also any kind of drag 
or belly dancing or queerlesque. But we ever. have seven performers. It's going to be wonderful. Um, all of us are going to be there backing you up. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll even come on stage for a few minutes just to talk about this nutty show. And uh, bring cash. Uh, bring, cash, bring cash, Patty just $1, said. $1, ten dollars, twenty dollars, fifty dollars, $100, $100, $1,000. $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $
And in the case of Crozier Tech, he sued us and sued us and sued and sued and lost um, because a city and a state has a right to protect its history and its landmarks. Um, but it's a fairly simple pro process if you own the Avon and you want to designate it. And then the city also, on the backside, offers tax incentives, so a reduction in your property taxes, et cetera, for depending where, where it is, you know, 10 years, 15 years, whatever. I, and if it's owned by a nonprofit, it can be in perpetuity as long as it's owned by a, a nonprofit. Right over here, there's a building. Uh, it was called BWC, which was where Dallas Voice had their uh, photographs enlarged to the full size that it was going to be printed. This is back in the 80s. Uh, just torn down. We're getting another CVS in the neighborhood. Yay! <laughs> I want to ask you, Valetta, while you're here, because it's a it's a sort of a real landmark in Oak Lawn. What do you think with uh, about what they've done with Old Parkland? Do you think that's a good thing? Um, I actually sat on the Parkland Foundation board when when we sold it, and let me say, I am thrilled to preserve both the Old Parkland and the nurses' quarters, because the old parking was landmarked and the nurses' quarters was not. And then part of that landmarking was to say, you can't build anything in front of that building. So really that driveway and the large trees and that sort of thing were important to the site and the landmarking. Um, and so I think that's very important. I think there are you know, criticisms out there about how large it sort of become. Uh, at the same time, I'm thrilled that those buildings have been saved and they're being used in most cases for nonprofits. There are a lot of foundations and so forth that are in those buildings and a lot of the history of what went on in those buildings has been preserved by the owner and showcased within the building. So you not only have the architecture, you have the things, you know, the nurses' uniforms and maybe scripts or something. I, I mean, all kinds of things related to what that was. And that is a very important landmark for the city of Dallas and for the county. And I think, you know, if you don't know where we're talking about, it's right there at Oak Lawn and Maple. Maple. Um, across from Scottish Rite, um, they took down Buddies too. They took down several clubs that were right along there, on on Maple at the end of Throckmorton, um, and now of course this construction's still, and built still additional going on. construction. Right, there's in new the construction style. that goes, but goes it's in the style, in the same style. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah, it looks great. And so it's exciting to see that those buildings come to life and that they're being used. Because I have to tell you. When it was first landmarked, I think a lot of folks thought, wow, who's going to be the savior of the building and comply with all the things that, that, that we set in place and save the old nurses' quarters? And it was saved so that there are still a number of nurses and doctors who alive who were there and could tell their stories. So there are now also there are oral histories mm. of what happened in the building. Uh, so that really is a, an idea about comprehensive preservation. It's not only the building. It's See, one thing that they're doing with the Avon is that now the new building going in there will comply with the rest of the neighborhood. It'll look just like all the other fast food joints. <laughs> <laughs> Not the type of preservation you no, do. No, it's just crushing. So, it's crushing to me that, that Dallas doesn't want to save more mm -hmm. of its past, and yet I think the citizens do, but sometimes it's the development community that goes, well, I've ran the numbers and I can do this. Or whenever somebody says it was not in great shape or it was structurally unsound, most of the time that's not true. Mm -hmm. What happened in downtown in the loss of those buildings on Main Street, there were people living in those buildings mm -hmm. like 60 days before they took them down. Yeah, but in that time they became structurally unsound. They became structurally. Well, they and you did. you tell uh, how unsound, unsound they were by how long it took them to destroy them. <laughs> <laughs> well, but take a look they at those properties. Over over they, had, they had them over and over. You wouldn't want to live there now because they are now completely structurally unsound. 
And the discomfort comes beyond that. You lost those buildings. A new building is going to come back that is two stories taller, just mm -hmm. two stories. So you essentially lost four buildings to get two more stories. Mm -hmm. And it's going to have a drive through valet on the backside oh, on a downtown street, and they're asking for a million dollars in tax increment financing district money. They should get none. They should get none. Yeah. They destroyed our history. Uh, we only have a few minutes. I, we, we have to mention this. This week could be Marriage Equality Week. Yes. Yep, could be. It, it's the week that we destroy Valletta's marriage. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. How could you do this to me? <laughs> it, it, it's going to be devastating to a lot of straight people because... Yeah, it's going to take uh, them down. Explain it. Well, it could happen Monday. It could happen Thursday if the court tomorrow um, opens up Thursday as, a, as an opinion if day. The, yeah, Thursday is not really open as an opinion day yet. Uh, but tomorrow, Monday and the 29th. Yeah, Monday so 29th we're are. expecting it either tomorrow or the following Monday. Uh, it could be on Thursday. It could be actually any day. Could actually they could extend the session into June if they want. They could July. Uh, into July. They could uh, wait until October. That doesn't usually happen. Yeah, so we're expecting we're, we're expecting either tomorrow or a the week from tomorrow. Day. Yeah. Uh, and what's going to happen? Well, they have 11 cases left to give opinions on. Um, the opinions are given at 9 a.m. or 9:30 a.m. Um, our time, on yes. U.S. Central Time. And so we should know something, or, or that, the, that the opinion hasn't ha happened by 10 or 10.30 tomorrow morning. Uh, same for Thursday, if they open Thursday up. The same for next Monday. Um, and so we should know whether that's the, the opinion's been released or not. Um, we'll John Warren, our is. county clerk, has said uh, he's going to issue marriage licenses as soon as he can. We have 27, we, we have actually Ken Mo Judge Ken Mulberg who said he's going to issue orders to execute uh, what the Supreme Court says, mm -hmm. uh, and 27 judges who are 27 were, state district judges. state district judges who are, who are going to uh, waive uh, the waiting period because Texas has a 72-hour waiting period. And people like Valletta Dallas have also. to wait. We don't have to wait. <laughs> I, we've had a hard life. I don't see why we should have to wait. And also, they're going to extend hours here in the records building yeah. only. Um, to to um, six thirty on yeah, and, and if one of the other buildings is just experiencing a flood, they're open to seeing exactly what they need to do. Uh, I mean, Dallas is being hmm reasonable. Uh, and I suspect Austin will be. Well, Austin, as well, she's also and, said and, yeah. And, yeah, and Bear County, uh, and Bear Houston, County. they have a Tea Party uh, County clerk who has said uh, that we're ruining the institution of marriage and. He'll comply with the law if he has to, but we'll see what happens in Houston. That should be a huge mess. Well, if, if there, are, there are rumors, you know, of course, that Paxton, our attorney general, and Abbott governor are going to try to get it in some sort of injunction against it. But you can't do that with you the Supreme Court. This is done. It's the, the, be the, they have exhausted their legal remedies. They have. They have. But they so could they can, take it maybe to the world court. Right. <laughs> Something, you know. Or no, they don't that, believe in the world court. <laughs> oh, gee. That's true. That's true. See, it's coming back to bite them. <laughs> so, no, then they're going to file papers to succeed. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and I hope that everyone still has health care mm -hmm. at the same time. Right. There are three major uh -huh. cases, and that's why I think they're going to spread them out Monday, Thursday, and Monday. Mm, it's possible. So they don't take the, the big PR hit. Yeah. But we still have the housing case, which comes right out of Texas, right out of Dallas, actually. Right. Um, we have the um, Obamacare subsidy uh, right. ruling. Which affects states that did not expand did not Medicare. Expand. Which and then we have marriage Texas. equality. And yep. on, at 6 p.m. on whatever evening it happens, come down to Cathedral of Hope. We're going to have some speakers, but we're going to walk down Cedar Springs to the Legacy of Love, of Love Monument um, at Cedar Springs in Oak Lawn. Some people will be getting married. Other people, uh, there'll be people there to issue divorces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, as an honorary lesbian. Yes. Yeah. I, that's I think true. I you are. Kind of have it both ways. That, that, oh, well, that's true. That, that's true. That's, that's true. true. You, you do have, get you it. You just both protected ways. your own marriage. I there. just protected <laughs> my own marriage. <laughs> you know, Harriet, who was with us last week. She's in that category too, that's isn't right. she? That's right. She's an honorary lesbian. So as well. yeah. So uh, and uh, and Laura Miller. 
her marriage, marriage is also, safe. Her, her marriage well. is safe, yeah. 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 It, it's yeah. good to know that there are some safe marriages. <laughs> we only have one uh, minute left. Joy, um, Wednesday? Wednesday, 8 o'clock to 10, 10 o'clock at the Cedar Springs Tap House fundraiser for KNON FM. And thank you so much for doing that. Uh, Valletta, thank you so much for being with us. It's Thank always you. a pleasure you're leaving for Idaho in the morning. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Have a great so time. I won't, I won't be at the Legacy of Love <clears throat> Monument if it's tomorrow. If it's tomorrow, but right. But if it's the following week, I will be there. Right, in awesome. Idaho, nothing will be going on because they already have marriage equality. That's right. That's right. They That's right. do. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. we all know Idaho is more progressive than Texas. Uh, <laughs> we, we'll see you next week. That's Maybe we'll scary. be talking marriage next week. Yep. See you then. KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227 or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you.